previously on the Pole Mates Podcast. Martin gives reasons for his first five-star Uber review. He did the job. Yeah. He got in the car and he yes. drove it. Yeah. He drove it fast. Yeah, he, he, did a, he did a very good job. Craig reveals his celebrity crush. I fancy Scott Dixon. Yeah. Mm. Martin desperately tries to find out who won Celebrity Love Island. Did Lewis win it? Just yes or no. There you go, we can dive straight in. There you go, we can dive straight in. Welcome back to the Polmates Podcast. Hello. Pol- Polcast. 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 I like Polcast. Polcast. Yes. Welcome back to Pol- Polcast episode 2.5, really. So, so s- big weekend for motorsport just yes. gone past. Huge weekend, really. Massive. Probably the biggest of the year? I would say. Yes. It's my favourite of the year, I think. Yeah. We've had um, Jewel in the Crown of Formula One. Monaco Grand Prix. The race where everything's about what happens off the track rather than on it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And everything that happens on the Saturday, really. The Saturday's more important with the uh, yes. with the Monaco Grand Prix. Uh, and of course we have the Indy 500, which is... We've not been excited about that at all. No, no, no. not at all. No. That's <laughs> gradually become, I think, my favourite race of the year. Yeah, I can see why. Yeah. The yeah. first 100 laps, I was doubting that. The next 25 laps, I was like, mm, and then the last 25 laps, yes, I'm hooked. That's it. it. Does That's make it. you wonder why they run it for 200 laps? You might as well just set them off with 30 and then just yeah. watch all the mayhem ensue. Positioning is tactics to get you to where. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a good one. But we'll come to that a bit later. Um, we've also had British Touring Car Championship at Thruxton, uh, which was. The weekend before it feels like months ago it now, does to be feel honest like it feels ago. like a long long time ago and yeah i've barely seen any of that to um, be honest did we have it was um berlin and e-pri e-pri on the berlin e Prix, which same i watched but i barely remember it was that exciting no, I th- oh really yeah I, I can sum that up now actually <laughs> i can just say um daniel ricciardo got a lights to flag victory and um daniel ricciardo that's talented. Yeah, he is, isn't it? He was in a, he was in a, um, a broken Red Bull, oh, hang on, a broken Audi. Daniel I, Apt, I even. You'd know everything about this race be forced upon you by a certain person. Yeah, she was quite excited. I can imagine. Yeah, and my phone went off non stop when he won. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Daniel Apt won. Um, the other big thing that my phone went off about was uh, Felipe Massa turned up. And he's driving next year, he's, he's, he's in the Formula E car. Look, so who's he signed for for next year? Has that been made? Or? It has been announced, Venturi. Venturi. Ah, Venturi. Okay, okay. Um, so she's now, she's been a Massa fan for a long time, but she's an Apt fan, and I think she's going to stay with Apt. That, no, no, that'd be good. Which? That'd be good. Yeah. It's the sensible decision, because let's face it, he's going to be right on, I know we've got new yeah. cars next year, He'll be on it. But Apt will be on it straight away. Audi are going to be on on this. Um, and the other thing that happened in Berlin, away from the race, well, away from the race racetrack, was Nico Rosberg uh, yes. tested the Generation Two car. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. showed it off and said it was hard work to drive. Oh. And rumor is he might be driving a Mercedes next year. Really? In Formula E. Ah, I know he has been quite outspoken about he's he doesn't want to return to competition. Um, the rumours are still going though. So. They always will. Like. Oh, yeah, He's a will. Formula yeah. One driver. Yeah. Um, but could you, could you Chris Meek back and doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, right now, though, if Chris Meek turned up at a Formula E track, they'd be touting him for a drive. Well, that's that's very in, true. In the Citroen. So yeah. Yeah. We must say that rumours are like that. At the moment. <laughs> yeah. So at, at this moment in time, well, I think about three days ago was yes, it? Chris yeah. Meek was fired from his Citroen drive for crashing a rally car too much. Yes. Which I thought that was the idea of rallying. Yeah, I, I don't know anyone that can drive a rally car and not crash it. <laughs> it's not the easiest thing. And today I've read that Sebastian Loeb has ruled himself out. Really? So yes. God, I thought that was going to be. Uh, yeah, the I thought it was given replacement. Yeah, no, he's ruled himself out. <coughs> Excuse me. That's uh, that's quite a surprise, though. Yeah, it was to me, but I don't know. Well, talk as well and sticking with the rally theme. Um, they reckon that he'll be picked up either by Toyota or Hyundai uh, are interested in Chris Mick's services so hopefully he won't be out of action for too long he's a good driver he's... he is a good driver another thing that a lot of people have been saying on social media is if you were to have 
that sat a couple of the other drivers a few years back, um, we're talking sort of 10, 15, 20 years ago, you sacked a few of those that have started crashing a lot, then uh, you'd have stunted quite a few decent careers, yeah. with Colin McRae being one of them. Yeah. Um, it's part of the learning curve. It is. In, in all formulas. It is. And Chris Meeks, definitely a, a fast, very fast guy. Yeah. He and deserves his place. He'll there, bounce so back, I'm yeah. sure. Definitely. So, on to Formula One. I, th I think that's probably Formula E TikTok, that's to be Formula honest. E that's TikTok. Formula E TikTok. That's the rally Shall we that's go, going on at the moment. Shall we go in chronological order then? Shall we go uh, British Touring Cars at Thruxton? We can go Touring Cars. Um, all I can say is it was at Thruxton. <laughs> and it was drier than last time we went to Thruxton together. Oh, uh, yes. That, we went that's... to Thruxton together. Was it 2012? Yes. It was the famous wetter than an otter's pocket meeting, which was absolutely ridiculous. But I went in 2013 and it was the hottest touring car race I've ever been to. <laughs> I got burnt. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a rarity. We normally go to Brands Hatch at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. So Come back to cold. <laughs> freezing cold at the first round of the season and then soaking wet at the last mm. round of the season. So, Well, um, I've got wet at Thruxton, I've got burnt at Thruxton. <laughs> So that, that's Thruxton over. Oh, and the night out in Andover that was particularly interesting for can that be broadcast? different reason. <laughs> Just some nutters out that night. I think it was, the drink was flowing. Have Fifteen you shared, year olds. Uh, you shared the um, uh, the hotel with uh, the Scuderia, Scuderia Victoria, Victoria yeah. Uh, team, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, hotel in the loosest possible sense of the word. <laughs> there was a bed in it. Quality by name. <laughs> Wi-Fi was about ten pounds an hour, I think. Did that get one of Jim's famous uh, reviews? I don't think it did because oh. I don't think it was good enough for her favourite. Her <laughs> review of the four six six bus. Well, it had wheels. <laughs> Brilliant, Jim's trip advisor. That should be a thing. We should get that yes. book made. Yes. Or at least like a little segment in the podcast. <laughs> that would be yes. amazing. Well, we'd have to travel to races then to review. <laughs> That's a shame. If anyone oh, wants to sponsor no. that, yes, <laughs> Travel Lodge. If you're out there. <laughs> We'd end up with Airbnb and stay in some really, really shady joints. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. If you've got a shady joint on Airbnb. <laughs> yeah, DM us. <laughs> uh, so, Polmates on uh, Instagram. Polmates one on Instagram and Polmates one on Twitter. And uh, yeah, we'll come and test it out, and Jen will give a famous TripAdvisor review. <laughs> the best review yet was just. Pfft, yeah. That was it. <laughs> How do you spell that? Is that one P or two P's? I or... didn't look because it was a review for my dinner last <laughs> night. <laughs> anyway, going back to Thruxton and the British Tour of Championship, we had now yet again. These have been um, pretty much a, a big surprise of the season. The Vauxhall Astros uh, by Powermax Racing. We've had three rounds of the season so yes, far yep. and they've won at every single round yep. at every single track this is a good car this year yeah it's didn't didn't ever expect it no no i bet tom chilton's thinking oh, do you know what? i wish i never left yes <laughs> i'll ask him he still hasn't come in to pick up his his item yet yeah, so. he's been gallivanting in yeah, Indy, he has been it? off to indianapolis for some reason yeah, yeah i don't know why he's no. boring over there yeah but yeah, so Josh Cook um, won race two of the weekend. Matt Neal had a lights to flag in uh, in race one. First time the new Honda has A, won a race and B, been on pole position. So, yes. Uh, I mean, that was pretty sort of, we knew when he got on pole, that was it. And on and that now. subject, while he was on pole, where was his nemesis? Plato uh, was at the back of the field. Yes. Um, they bookended it, really. Yeah. Um, in fact, Plato, they didn't get much better at all. Uh, race two, he was nowhere and never even made the grid for race three. Right. So something something going on at Subaru. Mm -hmm. um, Ash Sutton's car is still the only one that has any speed about it. It's strange. I think there's more going on there than what's being let on, to be honest with you. Um, but no idea what? No. If I was Plato, I'd be looking for another another drive. Yeah, with Vauxhall. Return to Vauxhall. You heard <laughs> right it here now. first. You heard it here first. <laughs> Plato back to Vauxhall. Although someone the other day on, I think it was on Facebook, was asking about him getting a Honda drive. Can you see that happening? To which there was much laughter. I but uh, yeah, it was, it was an interesting point they put across, but completely 
it's just not going to happen. No, no, that's <laughs> never going to happen. I <laughs> think even if, um, well, obviously Matt Newell's family has a lot of influence in that team, and I can never see that happening. If he wrote them the letter to ask for the drive, I think they'd laugh. Eh? <laughs> yes, yeah, there would have to be lots of, I would think, sort of public apologies and grovelling and, and kneeling before that ever happened. And uh, that's just not. JP would rather quit than do that. <laughs> yes, he would. He would indeed. Um, race three, uh, won by Adam Morgan, who again yeah. has had a very good start to the season. That's his second win of the year. Yes. Uh, that Mercedes is looking looking good. They are looking good. And I think having Tom Oliphant in the in a second proper Sicily car rather than the laser tools car of Aidan Moffat, having a second full car in the stable I think is helping them. Yeah. It not only in it obviously in the team's championship, but uh, data wise as well. It yeah. Having a third car in there, if one fails you've still got the two, it's yeah. always gonna yeah. I know it didn't, gonna help. didn't help them too much in Donington when they came together, but yeah, <laughs> we'll forgive them. That, that happens, happens to the best of them, doesn't it? Uh, I.e. Max and Danny. So there was a little bit of a talking point with race two. I, I don't know if, how much you saw of it, but uh, Josh Cook came from. I saw a, a lot of curb being taken a long, a long way back. <laughs> uh, it, it was a, it was a stonking drive, to be fair. Yeah. Josh Cook did yeah. phenomenally well. Um, putting some of his critics aside from last season, heavily criticised last year at MG um, for causing a few accidents. Some of it was probably chest, but I, a lot of it, I think, was, was overhyped and he was a scapegoat for, yeah. for many things. Yeah. But, to, but to come from as far back as he did, uh, he, he made no, no problems overtaking most people. The one, the sort of flashpoint of the race, he tried to go around the outside of Andrew Jordan at the chicane. Your mate, Andrew Jordan. Yes. <laughs> the, yeah. the chicane. And there was a little bit of a, of a hip and shoulder movement just mm. as they were coming into the chicane. Josh Cook jumped the chicane, took the place, and never handed it back, just carried on with his charge. To be fair, the state Andrew Jordan was in, he could have just gone past him and thought he was going off to the pharmacy. Well, that, he, well, he hadn't been well all Jordan weekend. Was not well. He didn't was, actually take part in race. Very, three. very ill. He, he did actually he did very well in the first two races to finish as high as he did just to get in the car to be fair you know it's yeah, very much so not, yeah. a, not a well puppy but um, no there was the jump there I, I've seen it I didn't it? I've only seen it the once I haven't been able to re-watch it or anything but uh, at first watch I thought uh, I thought Josh was being a bit cheeky to be honest with you and should have handed it back the fact that he just stormed off and went past everyone else I suppose made, made the decision a little bit more difficult for the stewards Having seen the replays again and again, to be fair to Josh, he was sort of hipped out very early on in the corner by Jordan. And as Cook said, he made that move on about three or four other people during that race and Jordan was the only one to make contact with him and force him across the chicane. Yeah. So to be fair, I think it was probably right, but it would have been very harsh to take it away yes. from him. He was so much yeah. quicker than everyone else. From what I'd seen of it, it looked like there was a coming together and Cook just had nowhere else to go. Yeah, yeah. so it, it was going to happen. You know, it was going to happen. So yeah, that's that's British touring guys pretty much sorted. Good weekend for the Vauxhalls. I think Adam Morgan does Adam Morgan lead the championship. I think he does. I think he does. Yes, yeah. he does. Um, it's a good year for the independents so far because Tom Ingram's right up there still in with a shout. Bit of a weekend to forget for him, but he's still there or thereabouts. Um, which pretty much is going to lead us on to the Formula One. That's yes. Monaco Grand Prix. Which I definitely did watch. Yes, I was with you. Yes. I saw you do it. Yes, you saw my foot going and I saw your foot going. And, and there was the whole Pit Lewis, so Pit Lewis, don't pit Seb, don't pit Seb. <laughs> <laughs> and me throw to the sofa. Yes. Yeah. Um, but the whole weekend really started in FP three. Max. Max Vanilla being quickest in FP one. Mm -hmm. FP two. Um and then Max comes up to the second part of the swimming pool section and did exactly the same as he did last year. The year Clifford. before, I believe. Was it? I think it was 2016. Was it? Because I googled it this morning. Ah, <laughs> did I? And clipped the um, clipped the barrier on the inside of the second part of the swimming pool complex and into the wall on the outside. The only the way I could tell the difference between the two bits of film side by side was that one had a halo and one didn't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He was wearing flip flops for one crash. <laughs> uh, yeah, which put his uh, mechanics in a uh, very awkward situation. Yeah, just um, before, and it was near the end of the session as well, wasn't again, it? So yeah, uh, lost so the hour. Didn't uh, didn't get it fixed in time for quality. No. Um, was do you think it's 
arrogance from him? Do you think, who was the tweet that you had about if only there was a love of formula? I can't. It was a really good tweet, and I can't remember who who actually sent it. But um, yeah, it was uh, basically a a tweet to say if only there was a place for young and, uh, and upcoming drivers to showcase their talents in a lower formula and learn their trade before coming into the big time which yeah it, it kind of has it has a good point to it because it, it's difficult max has won races we know he's talented yes we know he's fast inexperienced it, yeah he just needs to if he'd had a few more years in the lower formulas he he'd be used to this sort of lean period perhaps and and mentally he'd be in a better place than where he yeah. is at the moment you will be trying to force it yes every race is not working out he's forcing yeah. it and it's getting worse having said that it was a very good drive from him on the Sunday yes starting at the back of the field uh, we even mentioned it to each other we, we was almost had a bet on as to, as to how long he'd be in the race before he collected someone or made a mistake and, and he finished the race in the points he did. So. It was a very very good very uh, very mature drive from yes. Max. His yeah. first of the year, really. Yeah. And now, after that drive, Red Bull needs to pull him aside and say more of the same. Yes. Yes. You know, uh, if that Max turns up to every race, he will win races this yeah. year. Yeah. We don't want Max from FP3. We we'll yeah. want Max from the race. Yeah, that's it. Max from the race deserves to be in Formula One, and he is quick. Yes, he is. He is. But again, he is a young driver. It will iron it's, out. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, it will. With the right, the right people around him. I mean, mm. his dad seems uh, like the right sort of character to keep him on the straight and narrow. Uh, yeah. He's a twenty-year-old kid. It's it, it, it's going to happen. But uh, and as I said, I listened to the Autosport podcast this morning. And they were saying, was it just the whole idea that Ricciardo had been fastest in the first two sessions in a race that they knew they could win, and he wants to win it, so he needed to be top of that session. That, that could just that over could well have been reaching, just trying just, to get one up on his teammate yeah. again, just to try and prove that you know I'm here too. Yeah, that's it. I, mean, you, I don't think he needs to do that with Red Bull because no, clearly uh, they they've got all their all their eggs in the Verstappen basket yeah. for future. So that was the other point on the same podcast was they were saying if the whole Verstappen thing continues like this all year, how long before Mataschitz gets fed up with it and looks at Horner and looks at Marco and says well you two have told me he's the next big thing and he keeps crashing my cars and that's questions them and the job they're doing that's very true which that did make me think I think it was Ed Straw Stuart Codling I can't remember who the other one was on there this morning to be honest it was 8 o'clock I was tired I was on my way to work <laughs> well, it was half 7 I was on my way to work but yeah I just thought that was interesting that it goes higher than that it does go higher yeah, you I, know, hadn't, so I hadn't really thought so of Red that. Bull have got you know Horner and Marco have got to get him going for their own sake. Yes, yeah, but uh, yeah, it was just I thought it was a good point. Yeah, no, it was. So race wise, Max started at the back, barely even get away. Everything at the front was was all as you were. No real, no real moves made apart from Max. He, he made a few paces in the first first yeah. stint. But it, very slow wasn't it and it was a slow pace it was a very slow pace I think was it about 9-10 seconds off of qualifying pace yeah, they were running at around about. The, the hyper sauce were just pointless to be honest there yep. was no need for them everyone sort of got shot of them as early as possible um, except for Lance Stroll who ended up back on them uh, many times many times he had a couple of punches and well it's just the wheels are coming off for Williams at the moment that today it's been announced that their aero uh, their aero design has left as, as parted ways it's not looking good no for Williams which is a real real shame it's one of their down waves yes. when they take the drivers for the money they have a down and then they'll suddenly say oh let's go back to talent and then things will climb up and it does it does make you want to you just want them to put Kubica in for one race so you can just to see what the car is capable of yeah with someone who knows what they're doing in with the sort of most respect to Stroll and Sorokin they, they they need to learn from someone yeah to be honest Stroll's too young and too inexperienced for Sorokin to learn from it's not, it's not his fault but you know. I mean, this is going back to the, sort of the days probably when you or just after you started watching sort of 2011 2012 yeah, yeah. Perhaps not so much 2012 because I think that's when uh, they had Maldonado they had and Maldonado. they won a race that year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they were just nowhere. They were back markers, and it's not what we want to see from Williams. No, 
it's not really what you want to see from anyone. You want you want everyone to be competitive. Yes, yeah. Williams, especially with the history and the name, They're everyone's second favourite team. They are. They? Everyone They're has just, a soft spot for yeah. Williams because of the, the tradition. Um, they've never really ruffled any feathers. I mean, you could say Ferrari are, are the traditional Formula One team. They are effectively they are Formula One. However, much some people might disagree with that. They are Formula yeah, One. Yeah, they are. Uh, but they're a divisive team. They're a bit marmite Yeah. Williams are Formula One without being... You know, they're just... I don't know. You just can't imagine Formula One without them. No, you can't. You can't. And it would be a shame if anything happens mm. to them. But it's not looking good at the moment. No, it's really not. They need to sort that out. Yeah. So going back to first round of pit stops, I, I believe, is sort of the first real flashpoint. Cause yes. After... So it was lap 12 Lewis came in. Yes. Yeah. And he was the first he one was the first of the, in. you know, hadn't had an accident or anything. He was the first one to come in. And again, nothing really changed. There was quite a point on Sky when Lewis came out and he was behind Ocon. And they felt the need to point out that the Mercedes and the, and the Force India bosses had been together on the grid at the start of the race. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe discussing that this could happen during the race. Yeah, I think uh, the race was... And then the tin hat came off. <laughs> <laughs> the race was so sterile at that point, to be honest. They were trying to they were trying to dramatise anything that they could. Uh, Ocon was, was very quick to get out of yeah. Hamilton's way. Um, Yes, he has a Mercedes engine in the back of his car, but I think it was more about he, he was protecting his own race. He knew he yeah. wasn't going to challenge them. Yeah. Well, slow himself down by doing that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So it was a case of good out of the way. And uh, to be fair as well, uh, a few other people came up behind Ocon and he was just as quick to get out of the way. Yeah, so that's it. In a way, it just showed maturity. It did. Yeah. That's, it was nothing exactly. more. It was showing that he knows what he's cut. And that's why he had a great weekend and part of it was because he did that. Yes. Yeah. So um, the other point in the pit stops was that they all came out on ultra softs except Bottas of the front went runners. to the super softs which turned out to be the right call it was yes. probably the best tyre to be on unfortunately though Monaco being Monaco couldn't really capitalise on it all it did was bring him closer to Roikkonen's gearbox yes so they poodled around on those until lap 28 yes when Ricciardo had a problem which apparently on one of the radio channels he came over and said it's the K isn't it and there was no answer back until the very end of the race yes mate it was the K we didn't want to let anyone else know that's what it was so it was the MG UK that had gone ah. which meant he couldn't get enough speed to use his seventh gear right or his eighth gear although as Jolyn Palmer said you don't use eighth gear at Monaco no you know. I can imagine he'd barely be in seventh. So yeah, well, apparently they do use seventh, mm. and he couldn't get into it. Not that it mattered. No, <laughs> he was quick enough out the corners uh, to deal with Seb. I, I did see an interview with Seb earlier on this morning. Actually, he was saying uh, that, barring the initial noticing that the loss of power on the straight, he got a little bit closer. He then quickly realised and quicker than anyone at, at the Sky or anyone watching at the time that he, he knew he was never going to get past him. It, yeah. the, the Red Bull was too quick yeah. in, in the right places or it's wrong places. Out Seb, the corners I guess. and yeah that's it. Um, and uh, although it did fluctuate the gap throughout the rest of the race he said I think his quote was we were never there. No. So they weren't. They weren't. It was all, all a bit I think the drivers for the drivers it was a fairly boring race except for, for Danny Rick I think who was and, and Max I don't know really yeah. Red Bulls um, Ocon was out on his own finished a very respectable six which is where he qualified did very very well did very very well um, but it said he was he said it was a lonely race <laughs> he didn't really see anyone no um, anyway that's quite nice around Monaco though yes because you're so busy watching it I, I only know from the PlayStation but I'm so busy watching the walls I'm, I'm watching the curbs I always get a closer look at the walls yeah I usually get a fairly close look uh, <laughs> usually Raskas you make it as far as that I'm not a bit sand of oil. I'm straight in the way <laughs> for some reason I have a problem with Raskas and I just clipped the, the right hand front wheel uh -huh. so many times <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job we're not real drivers yes well <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was about lap 45 and it was pretty stale and you then said if Lewis was to come in now he would have come out just behind 
Bottas. He would, yeah, he would have come out. He, he'd have been there or thereabouts with Ocon. He would have just about come out. I believe if they got it right, he would have come out ahead of Ocon. Yeah, with a good pit stop. With a good yeah. pit stop. And because uh, it was about this time, we knew Bottas was on the best tyre. It looked as if he might be able to get pit working it off mm. at the time. Um, Lewis was complaining. Lewis he was, was deeply was, unhappy with his tyres. Yes, he was. He was. And, he was falling back from Vettel yeah. as well. And why leave a driver out if the driver's not happy with his tyre? What's the point in saying get on with it? when he's quite obviously unhappy yeah. and it's not going to get him anywhere by staying on it why not give it a risk yes yeah I, um, was, I was pretty much screaming for them to bring him in at that mm. time he would have been put onto the super sauce obviously he would have dropped behind Bottas and Raikkonen which is Mercedes reason well, for not doing it at the time everyone keeps saying track position's king in Monaco why didn't Max finish last then exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> Also, it would have made a very interesting thing happen in the race because would Ferrari have have covered with Seb? And if Ferrari would have covered with Seb, it would have forced Red Bull into having to do something with Ricciardo. Yeah. And it would have then pushed Bottas and Raikkonen forward, Bottas being on that tyre. Being on that tyre anyway. Raikkonen is then trying to hold Bottas up for Seb yes. to let Seb through. Yeah. yeah. It could have been huge. It could have, it, it, and I do think it would have given Lewis a better race. Yeah, he yeah. would have been closer to Seb. As it as it turned out, they obviously they chose the right decision, really, because they kept the status quo. Nothing bad happened. They dropped a couple of points to Seb, three, four points. But to not Seb a lot. In the not compared with if they'd have come one, two, exactly. coming three, um, two, three. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, Mercedes. I understand their their point. It was the safe option. It was the safe option. And it's fine to sit on the armchair screaming at the TV saying, do it, do it, do it, go on, risk it. We, we were all just we were just <laughs> trying to clutch at something interesting to go on, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Because by, by this time it was clear that Ricardo had it covered, um, providing the car didn't give up completely, which it didn't. Apparently there was a risk of it. Really? Apparently, but I don't know how true that was. Apparently there was a, a small, small chance, but, yeah, but he changed his driving style and he, you know, he, he got with it. We did lose Fernando Alonso in another Renault powered car, but I believe was that gearbox related. Yes. Which is actually Alonso's first retirement of the year. Yeah. Which is quite a difference from last year for Paul McLaren. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then on seventy two, Leclerc had a problem with his brake. Yes, front right brake failed. <laughs> Uh, quite in a big way nice puff of smoke. black smoke <laughs> and then uh, into the back of Hartley yeah to be fair to the clerk he did very well to actually sort of controlling that accident yeah. to he be only honest. tagged the rear corner of Hartley he could have gone full into the back of him and over, possibly over him yes yeah no. he did the bit he knew the brake well obviously he knew the brake had failed and immediately tried to put it in the wall as much as possible mm. and away from Brendan unfortunately Brendan didn't make it out of the way quick enough um, and uh, it caused a uh, caused a vir virtual, virtual safety, safety car. car. Yeah, it was a shame because Leclerc seemed to be doing quite well up to then. Yeah, it was, you know, he was steady. He, he was doing all right. Obviously, at home home track as well. Yes, in fact, Leclerc's had a very good season so far. I think you mentioned it briefly in the he's, last one. He's, he's impressive. He's yeah. good. He's good. Pierre Gasly also another points finish. Yes, and that was the other driver. It's sort of when you're looking at driver of the day, you're thinking, oh, Ricciardo for what he did. Ocon was very good. Leclerc until that, and Gasly would be the other one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was. How did Lewis Hamilton describe it? <laughs> that was boring shiz. I think <laughs> was his boring words. Shiz. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't great. Even Alonso has come out and said it's the most boring race ever. Yeah. So, don't know. I don't know how you can jazz it up. I don't know. There's been a lot of talk after this race. I, I think. Yeah. Everyone knows with Monaco that you can't overtake very easily. It can, it can be done. Yeah. It's it's not easy. It's narrow. If this track was ever sort of mentioned nowadays as a, oh, we should run these cars around the streets of Monaco, we've got this track layout here, it as wouldn't. as the current layout is, it would never be approved. No, no. It, it's all down to history with this place. Yes, yeah. Now, I understand it, this race wasn't the best 
in terms of actual action fighting with each other yeah but to actually physically sit and watch these drivers doing what they're doing is a it is fascinating how can they do what they do for 78 laps without without crashing we've already said maximum concentration isn't it we've already said playstation lap one or two we're already in the wall yeah that's it well i i do 25 percent races when i race it and i struggle to concentrate to finish a race there yeah to do it for the full the concentration levels are are insane and in a way it's probably a the reason the races are so boring at the moment is probably at monaco uh, is probably down to the quality of drivers we have in the field yeah they're it's gone on the days of having your drivers which are perhaps shouldn't be there i know yeah. we've mentioned pre-qualifying and getting knocked so, out yeah, and yeah. yeah i know we've mentioned stroll and sorokin but mm. still they are very tidy drivers yes yeah yeah uh, and uh, i think that's probably it's a, a quality thing as well as mm. much as a yeah that's it yeah. it's a track issue but it is it's is just fascinating to watch these guys do what they do around monaco it's, it. it's watchable for a different reason than some of the other tracks that we'll go to a Silverstone it, very or, much so. you know and I think the majority of people that actually watch the Monaco Grand Prix uh, as real fans they know what to expect yeah. we, all, we all should know unless it's wet nothing much is going to happen then. every year we know it's not going to be the most amazing race ever but you turn it on and whoever you're watching on TV will hype it oh it's Monaco it's Monaco it's Monaco yeah yeah but it's not about the racing. Part of it is about the yachts and the nightlife. Exactly. And the, this is a, a race the glamour. that a, a lot of people will, will only actually tune into one race a year and this will be the one yeah. because of where it is, yeah, what it, it means. And that's partly why I look forward to it. Yeah. You know, it's it's special for other reasons. Yes. Yeah. And with that being said, there's a lot of uh, talk about the layout changing. Uh, so they're reclaiming the... some of the land. I think they're calling it reclaiming. They, they're filling the sea in. No, I think this has <laughs> to <laughs> in if, Venice. If they change, if they change the track, I can't see Monaco being being taken off the calendar. I don't think it should be taken off no, the calendar. No, personally. I'd agree with that. Um, it would you could say perhaps take it off the calendar as an official championship race but then i think would everyone turn up to it i know exactly it's got to stay to me anyway it has to stay on this layout unless a new proposed layout is a wide enough yeah uh, and and be going to be good enough to promote overtaking yes and actually have it happen if yeah. not they should just leave it where it is yeah as it is it would be nice if they could link the la- the current layout and just go off on a little tangent somewhere where there's a good o- overtaking opportunity or two and then back to the traditional yeah you don't mind watching cars following around for a lap when there's that that main overtake although i always look at out of the tunnel i always thought was the main overtaking spot yes yeah I'm struggling now to think of many that happened there this weekend. So uh, Max, yeah, Max did it. Um, it was a little bit of a that always used to be the place to watch. Yeah, but yes, yeah, we'll have to see. I think I I haven't actually seen where they're reclaiming or what they're doing. I haven't no. seen any plans for it. No. I've just read they're doing it. So, this sort of brings us on a, a little bit to um, the Indy Five Hundred. In respect that. It, it was similar I guess it wasn't the most exciting Indy 500 there was a tactical battle but I felt on lap 100 jumping ahead I was like there's all these different little tactics going on and I'm not kept up with any of them you know I was sitting on lap 100 I couldn't tell you who pitted last and when power had pitted and when Helio had pitted and just I really struggled to keep up up to that point but it was all going on it was all yeah any anyone who tuned into last year's Indy 500 because Alonso was was racing may have thought oh I'll give it a go again this year they would have been disappointed I think with with this one yes 
and she said the first hundred laps or so it was very very chess like everyone was positioning themselves the cars was a lot of talk about this year's aero kits obviously they've had a big big aero change for the cars this year everyone was saying at the beginning before sort of once the solo runs had been done in practice everyone was saying oh we could get some really close pack racing in this year's 500 with without the sort of uh, the big aero kits creating so much wake and everyone was saying oh they're gonna be so much close together this is gonna be a really exciting one that never happened no it turned out that perhaps the lower wings in this didn't give off as much tow no there is talk that maybe they need a bit more aero you know but having having said said that again uh, in lines with with what we're saying about monaco it was fascinating to watch the drivers sh struggle really with they the car really maybe. were the cars were driving them round for, for some of it, it they, was, they really were and, and there were accidents that they'd save and then they'd lose it again uh, you know uh, they're amazing these guys Sebastian Bourdais was, was yes. one of those he, he lost the rear end caught it and then it, it just went back on him and it put him in the wall uh, these were these were big drivers making the uh, Patrick Castroneves Canaan um, Sage Carrion Sage Carrion yeah uh, yeah the other one was the first one it was um, Ed Jones was the Ed other one. Jones that was the other one yeah that, that went into the wall unfortunately Will Davison was collected Alex Davison Will Davison I can't remember which one it is I just know he's driving for car Davison, 33, car 33 Davidson. the red one <laughs> the red one <laughs> and he had last year's champion uh, embedded in the rear end of him yes yeah uh, yeah Sart well, Sarto was the first one to crush out the race he was last he was year's champion took Davison with him Davidson looked slow off the corner. It, it must be said he was yes. slow off the corner. Yeah. From, I mean, we saw it from from Sato's view. To me, obviously, I've, I've never driven an Indy car. I've certainly <laughs> never, never driven any car at two hundred plus miles an hour on an oval. On an oval, <laughs> coming off a corner. It looked. It, you could just see it coming from a mile away. It looked like he had so much time to react, but obviously couldn't. And yeah. Just. It did. Oh. It was like this car in front. There's a car in front. He's going to move in a minute. Yeah. He's going to move in a minute. Then I went and made a cup of tea. He <laughs> came out like, there's a car in front. <laughs> yeah, and it just happened. It was, yeah. It was, it was a bit of a strange one. Mm. Though, but uh, yeah, that took them both out. Uh, first major incident or talking point of race. Yes, here. yeah. Uh, the, third, the opening part, uh, Ed Carpenter got a good start. Went away he went. It was sort of, you were really wasn't it, it? It, it was. Will Power was around and uh... it was uh, TK was was going forward a little bit. He made a good. Obviously, he's blinding on starts and restarts anyway. Yeah. TK, so <laughs> uh, that was looking uh, looking promising for a while. We lost Danica Patrick in our, our last ever race. Yeah, that was that was quite sad actually. It was, I'm still fairly new to this, but it was. I like her. Yeah, she's, she's she comes across really well. It's a shame she's she's going. She's thirty six. Yeah, thirty six years old. She's got more years in her yet. Okay. But Will Power went on to win it. It's thirty seven. Yeah. Uh, so she can at least get next year out of it. Then I think Elio is 40, 42, 43, something along those Maybe. lines. Maybe. And TK is one hundred and two. TK is about one hundred and two. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, incidentally, on TK, I was to, uh, I was watching the IndyCar have a YouTube channel the Verizon IndyCar series, their official YouTube channel. And they do they do all sorts of videos, promo stuff. They were doing bits with uh, Joseph Newgarden and Simon Pagano with the uh, the autograph challenge. Where that they was were, brilliant. That was, that was really, really funny. It just, if one of them had won it and the other one had gone and signed the milk, that would, that would, <laughs> that would have finished it off perfectly. Um, the fact that one of them signed the other one's mum <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was good, that. Uh, yes, yeah, so they yeah, they have this YouTube channel and they archive uh, certain certain races. At the moment, there's the entire 2008 IndyCar season, which is the unification year uh, where Champ Car and IndyCar became one again. And uh, I've been watching some of those, and uh, it was the the Homestead one, the opening man. They were talking about uh, Tony Kanaan, and he just signed a five-year deal with. Andretti Green. 
Yeah. And they were saying about, do you think you'd actually see that out and, and stay with them for that long? Uh, I think it might have been Scott Goodyear was, was talking to him and uh, Tony Khan said he would race definitely for three years, whether he'd move on to be something else in the team coach or whatever yeah. uh, uh, for the other two years have, have another job uh, then that would probably be what he'd do he said it was a young man's game is this 2008 and he's still going now <laughs> with a full term later. IndyCar ride yeah so he is something special really Tony it's, Kanoran is yeah. a great great professional unfortunately for him things went wrong fairly close to the end I think it was about that 187 or 188 yeah it was coming up he would had his pit stop and they were sort of saying right if there's another yellow his restarts are amazing he'll be on the back and he'll be off from a restart and he'll be pushing to win this yes uh, he did get the yellow unfortunately it was him that caused it yes uh, again very similar accident to, to pretty much every once that we yeah. saw barring uh, Davison and Sato's uh, just lost the rear end yeah uh, on the exit in the corner that and car the looks so end. slippery yeah and yeah. you know if TK can do it anyone can do it exactly exactly and again as with Danny it was sad he sat in the car he's got his gloved hand over his eyes and you just thought you know yes one of the great names you want to see their fighting at the front and yeah. race over yeah speaking of great names fighting at the front Elio back for uh, back for Team Penske yeah. yeah doing the Indy 500 obviously he hasn't got a full term ride this year because he's off with Team Penske in the IMSA sports car series uh, very similar accident to Tony Kanaan but ended up up the pit lane yes so at least he didn't have far to walk no but he was blocking it <laughs> he, was, he was blocking it slightly uh, we hoped that they weren't going to slap him with a pit lane speeding penalty as well because that would just have been, uh, been too much uh, well, well Sebastian Vettel got a hundred hundred euro fine for going one one kilometre an hour. hour. Kilometre yes. an hour. Sixty-one kilometres an hour. He he went down the pit lane yeah, instead of sixty, and he got a hundred euros. So, if Helio was going down there at a sort of a hundred and you know whatever <laughs> mile an hour, <laughs> I'm sure Helio could afford it. <laughs> <laughs> but incidentally, as well, it has, I believe, been confirmed. He has a, a team Penske ride for next year's five hundred. Ah, I didn't That's know that. That's good. In, he he played with them for another go, and he's got it. So. Uh, as long as Alonso doesn't come back and take his ride, <laughs> he's, he's well. We were going to get onto that in a minute, weren't we? Uh, we were. Good. Speaking of of, of Alonso, actually, uh, a special mention to Stefan Wilson, uh, brother of Justin, uh, led the Indy 500 with five laps to go. He did. Uh, unfortunately, he was on the wrong wrong strategy and didn't quite have enough fuel left. As was Jack Harvey was Jack and Oriol Servia. Yes. Yeah. It would have been it would have been some story had Stefan Wilson managed to win it, especially yes. after uh, obviously the sad loss of Justin in the IndyCar series a few years ago. He is the, with the with the Alonso link. Justin, uh, sorry, Justin. Stefan Wilson had a drive for last year's Indy Five Hundred yeah. with Alonso coming in fairly last minute. It was Stefan that had to give his place up. He was promised by. Michael Andretti arrived in, in this year's race and he didn't waste it. He, no, he, he really did a very, didn't. very good job yeah. uh, with with hope of trying to get a full term ride for next season and well he's done his he's done his chances really, really well. Yeah, that's that was you know, short of winning it, which wasn't expected, that's the best he could have done. Yes, yeah, he, he put his name out there and yeah. people are starting to see Stefan Wilson as Stefan Wilson and not yeah. badass Wilson's brother. Yeah. So that's that's, that's a, a step in the thing. right direction. It is, yeah. It is. Uh, yeah, yeah, shout out to Jack Harvey as well, also on a similar strategy and, yeah. and did very, very well. He was up there. Which leads us to uh, the winner. The winner. <laughs> Which we are both massively struggling with. <laughs> Me being fairly new to IndyCar, I I learn a lot from you and I pick up on things. Through the, you're the reason that I'm a Plato fan. <laughs> basically, you know, so very similarly, the drivers, I, I, I love Rossi, but I like Hinchcliffe and that's down to you and I have a dislike for power because of you <laughs> and then when when he crossed the finish line and won it I thought give him a chance give him a chance but nothing's led me to think yeah I quite like this guy <laughs> <laughs> he's probably a very nice guy but coming out and saying you're my 
I should respect me now. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Uh, Use your winning as a chance to I, to say, you know, thank you to my fans, not all of positive. you that doubted me. I don't like you. The, the, <laughs> the, the argument against that is everything he was feeling at that particular time, he let everyone know, which kind of, when you look at Formula One and obviously find Daniel Ricciardo getting out of his shoe and drinking out of his shoe um, it's all a bit sterile yeah there, there is every now and then you see a driver win a race and they're, they're really up for it they, they've absolutely loved it but they sometimes they're a little bit get out and the trouble is if I was winning races I'd get out I'd stand in my car I'd wave my hands I'd wet myself yes and I'd cry <laughs> yeah you know, every single time. And it was nice to see Willpower go through such raw emotion in front of everyone. You could see it in his eyes. It meant a lot. Oh, he and, looked like a psychopath. And that's when I sat there and I thought, oh my God, this is am- witnessing. This is amazing. This guy's worked so hard for this, yeah. you know. And and I, I get his point to be, to, he's finished second in the IndyCar series. Uh, back when I first started getting into it, the reason I have a dislike for Willpower I mean, I mean I've, I've seen more power I've seen him race at France he was racing for Australia in, in A1 GP obviously before he went over to America it, he, he seemed like a nice guy he was very driven he knew what he wanted that's but, why he's where he is yeah, exactly yeah. exactly uh, my dislike for him came getting into IndyCar into the, into the sort of time span that it was Dario Franchitti was doing really 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 good things for, yeah. for Great Britain uh, or, and Scotland as someone who doesn't get enough recognition in, in the media over here three time Indy 500 winner for Christ's sake so yeah. the guy's a legend and you go and ask most people to name racing drivers and you'll get Lewis Hamilton Jensen Button yes um, is Michael Schumacher um, still driving Michael Schumacher? maybe is he still? did Sterling Moss used to race cars yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 yeah no it's one will ever mention name. Dario no one will ever mention Dario uh, Dan Weldon was another one uh, fell in love with his driving style he just well I showed you a clip of him earlier yeah. actually at Homestead that was uh, yeah. he started at 22nd and I think by lap 3 he was about 14th 15th uh, he'd he had a couple of runnings with Will Power and that's the reason why I was against it again Will Power being interviewed he's very outspoken if if he feels someone has wronged him he will say it <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much I'm, it's funny I'm criticising him for saying that yeah I'm bored of Formula 1 drivers always giving the same it's a very, answers it's a fine line isn't it it really it's is it's kind of that thing where as long as they don't do it to my driver it's, yeah. it's okay the poor guy's dancing on the edge of it and he's actually quite interesting yes and then I'm sitting here going yeah I'm not I think another reason now that I sort of dislike Will Power is to, is to wind my mouth as well. Which yeah, is and I've adopted that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the same reason that I wore a Roma shirt to her house the other day when Roma were about to play Liverpool. Yeah, yeah that backfired <laughs> on you because uh, Liverpool taunted them. <laughs> I very, very nearly turned up on Sunday wearing a Madrid shirt. I think you wouldn't have been wearing that. No, I day. think it would have gone on the barbecue. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was very, very tempting yeah. since my Rossi shirt didn't turn up. <laughs> Which is the other man I want to mention. Yes. Started on the back row, finished fourth. Yes. And what flew. those overtakes. Literally flew. Those overtakes are incredible. In actual fact, we might link uh, a few of the clips down in the description uh, yes. in this yeah. because they are, well, insane. How, how man we possessed managed to out there. fit an, uh, an Indy car through some of those gaps, I will mm. never know. And a big respect to the people who was racing with as well because... He, he, yeah there was no way you could do that with people you don't trust no you? no and he obviously does yeah and yeah uh, that was that was phenomenal yeah that was that was a good drive and um do we shout out for the missing man the missing man from bumper day well the missing man and the missing woman but obviously being a big Hinchcliffe fan a huge Hinchcliffe fan and uh, when <laughs> actually when you told me uh, I think you you messaged me uh, I didn't believe you to start with and then I had to go and search it myself you sent even sent a video clip and yeah. I watched it and I was like so what does this mean what does this mean <laughs> and I sat and watched the entire qualifying and I thought he'll still get him he'll still get him I had a proper meltdown <laughs> yeah and it even it shocked me even that Pippa Man wasn't there because 
I think every IndyCar race I've ever seen, she's been around or mentioned in some manner. Yes. That even called me out that she wasn't there, but Hinchcliffe, obviously, listen to the Hinch and Rossi off track podcast, and he's going to beat the Indy 500. And then he wasn't. Yes. Yeah. However, the way he, he's handled the whole situation has been mega. It deserves special credit for that. He could have massively kicked off in the press and said, Look, I've got all this money. Get the car that qualifies, not the driver. Mm-hmm. Get one of those guys out of my car. I'm having their car. I'm yeah. having that drive. Yeah. And he didn't. he didn't. He stood back and he said, this is my lot. Let's do it next year. He is a full-time driver. They could quite easily have, have used their power and said, out of the car, we want James in. Because it's uh, Indy is one of those uh, rare sort of occasions where the, the car qualifies, the driver doesn't. So if the car's in the field, technically you can put any one of your drivers in that car. If they haven't made it through, yeah. Uh, but it, it is it is a big, a big thing that they didn't actually do that. I, it's 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 well played. I think it was the right thing to do to it not, was. you know, and the right thing thing for him to not push. Jay Howard was the guy I was thinking of. Yes, yes. It, it could quite easily have taken him out of the car. But, uh, no, they didn't. So you know, good luck. And he finished the race. Yes. He finished last on track, but he, you know, he still to finish at Indy is no, it's, it's, no it's not thing. a small when, thing. When you look at the people who didn't, for example, TK and Danica Patrick and Angelo Castro Nervous. Yeah, that's it. So, so no, to finish is you know amazing, and Jack Harvey is oh he's he's he um, Schmidt Peterson, but no, he's Shane, um, with, he's with, with Schmidt them. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, no, so good on him, and hopefully he'll come back next year, and yeah, I'd love um, to see him blitz it, and as a Rossi fan, come second to Rossi. Yes, I think their podcast would be quite interesting then. That, that, was, that would be good. James, uh, obviously, James had that horrendous crash here a few years ago. Um, and he came back from the that. incident that put him out uh, for, for quite some time. It was a touch and go with him for for a moment with the part of the car actually going through the cockpit and through his leg. That was uh, a, a very nasty incident, and he came back and he banged it on pole the following year. So he's he's not lost any of his no. Um, no, I, I think he's got a special relationship with Indy. Yes. You know, yeah, and, uh, and I, he will get it. He will get it he one will. day. And it wouldn't surprise me if next year he gets pole. No. Or wins it. No. He was, he was Both, unlucky on bump day. But yeah, yeah, it really wouldn't. Yeah. But uh, he's back uh, back on track this weekend at Detroit. Yes. I'm looking forward so, to that. Uh, there's a race on Saturday and on Sunday, I believe. It's the, the, the duel in Detroit. So that will be good. You mentioned him a little bit earlier, we're going to come back to him now, Fernando Alonso. Now, I think this is going to be something that we're going to hear a lot of over the rest of the season. There is a rumour, uh, in actual fact, there, there, there's kind of two rumours that could become one here, because there is a rumour, A, that McLaren want to enter IndyCar full-time. Which would be interesting. Which, obviously, they did it last year with uh, Andretti Autosport. Yeah. For, for the one-off indie running Alonso. Zach Brown obviously is, is, is American who, who now is in charge of, of McLaren. I would personally would love to see them back in Indy. Yes. Uh, full-time. Yeah. Do you think with Andretti? And uh, Because of the experience that Andretti brings. Uh, there's no better place to start really, is there? Yeah. I think that's probably the best. Yeah. Would Honda agree? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't. I don't. I don't suppose it would bother them actually. It depends on who they go. Obviously, if Honda supply Andretti, then that's that. Exactly. If it's going to help Andretti win races, Honda want to win races. So, yeah, oh, it me. tends to go throughout the seasons. It you have a swing really in IndyCar. Notice one year the the ship loads have got an advantage, ever so slightly. And, and then the next year it will swing back and the Hondas have the advantage ever so slightly so there's a, there's a really good rivalry between the two and they keep each other on their toes and that's it it's not like Formula 1 where one gets an advantage and just runs away with it it's, it's very different to that uh, the second uh, big rumour that's sort of kicking off this week is Alonso to IndyCar next year full term which would make sense because he's doing Le Mans this year he's doing them on this year if he were to win Le Mans get him in the IndyCar get him racing IndyCar used to it knows exactly what the car's doing yeah full on assault as if last year was a practice session yeah you know this is it this is take, take nothing away from last year's attempt to be to be fair he was right in with a shout last year yeah straight if away that, if that Honda hadn't have blown up he was he was there yeah yeah 
so it would be it would be very interesting to see if if he can do this triple crown but imagine if he did go there next year did the full time won the championship but didn't win indy that'd be quite twisted i it would but it would be typical alonso it would yeah yeah i think the guy's amazing but it just doesn't work out for him it's, it's so unlucky at times do you know what that might is to to be fair that might be the best thing that could happen because mm. It would keep him in India the following year. Perhaps if he came over and won yes. the five hundred, and and showed well, but didn't perhaps win the championship, or would he even won the championship and the five hundred in the same year, uh, would he then just hang up his boots, go somewhere else? You do wonder because he's done it. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So maybe I want to watch him race for as long as possible. Yes, he just can. He, Love him. He's straight out of old school, isn't he? he can yeah. just get in anything and push it to the absolute yeah. limit, which is amazing and it's something that I believe more Formula 1 drivers more drivers of any type uh, should be allowed to do yes yeah I, I think it's very very big of Zach Brown and McLaren to actually let him go and do this do this journey yeah. if he was at Ferrari they, they wouldn't have let him do it they wouldn't have been happy with him doing it not that this I mean this sort of thing has been going on for for, for years and years and years back as far as John John Surtees yes he was, yeah he, signed by MV Augusta and was told uh, he shouldn't he shouldn't be on any other bikes he was he was racing another series on, on other bikes MV Augusta said no you're an MV Augusta rider you, you're not to ride anything else yeah. apart from yeah. MV Augusta so he said fine but that means I can drive anything I like so he said so he, he went yeah, on to, to drive motor cars yeah. for a living so uh, I mean that's the extreme he's going from bikes to cars you yes. know I mean they all used to drive the Formula 2 and the Formula 1 circuit and yeah yeah, yeah. I don't know, it's, it's a different world now. You think the world's a lot closer, but it doesn't seem to happen anymore, no. so it's, it's good to see. No. Uh, and it'd be nice to see the other way around, see how an IndyCar driver could do getting in a Formula One car. This is something I was I was uh, going to talk to you about at some point, and as we brought it up, we might as well talk about it now. There's been a lot of talk about uh, sort of being a big fan of the IndyCar series and, and everything, uh, big into the American driver situation. There's been a lot of talk about when and where is the next top American driver going to come from in Formula One. Yeah. Uh, Rumour has it Haas were in talks with Joseph Newgarden. He's the man that straight away comes to my mind. And uh, I believe they came out at the beginning of the season and, and said that there are no American drivers out there that are... They did, and they came out with that the weekend that I was at Autosport International. Yes. And it was a bit of a talking point amongst some people at Autosport, sort of saying, well, are they actually watching American racing? I don't think There's they are. There's guys out there, but you've not put them in a Formula One car to find out if they're good enough. Exactly. And well, Alexander Rossi, who's who's been there, yeah. uh, he'd, he'd certainly be good enough in Formula yes. One. And Hunter Ray. Hunter Ray's Hunter the other Ray, guy I think of. Hunter Ray, Joseph Newgarden, uh, Newgarden for sure. He's he's yes. young enough. He's hungry enough. He's he'd drop the wheels off it. He would. He's a I very really mature driver. Was. Very mature driver for his age. Always has been ever he's since he came into defending Indiana. champion as well. You know. Yeah. He's, and I, no one's given an American driver a chance really. Uh, I know Rossi had that brief go, but it was in a catering. It was in yeah. It was never going to get any further. No, and it's got to it's got to come at some point. There is going to be a an American driver that that goes the other. A lot of people go Formula One to IndyCar. It's going to be soon. I think we're going to have someone go IndyCar to Formula it's One and be a success. It's got to happen. Because who was the last American driver given a proper chance in Formula One? The last person I can remember. I might be wrong with this, but I think it was Scott Speed, Speed in Toro Rosso. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and again, that was when Toro Rosso weren't. No, they weren't what they are now. That was before Vettel. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was so before they, they got a win or. I yeah, mean, I even think I, I know he's he's not American, but you look at the the drivers in IndyCar series. I still think uh, Bourdais could do a, a decent job in something better than a Toro Rosso that he was in before. But yes, it, yeah. The, the, there's a lot of very decent drivers in the field. Yeah. I'm looking at the list now and the names that jump out and you just you know obviously some of the guys are too old to be doing that but there's drivers out there that can do it mm. Mm. but they need a chance they do 
Okay. I mean, I even think uh, talking about American ones, I even think uh, Graham Rahal. Yes. Yeah. Which makes you wonder for the uh, Grand Prix of the America, the Circuit of the Americas, could they get any IndyCar drivers there and get them to drive a Formula One car around as a demonstration? And because obviously it might help sell tickets as well. If you say, "Oh well, reigning champion Joseph Newgarden's here, and he's going to drive a Formula One car around," mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he drives IndyCar. That's different. Yeah. That's just another get him a go in it. And America really, uh, America, uh, Formula One really want to, to to break America. And to be fair, this is the one of the longest runs they've had in America. It just and doesn't a, seem to happen. Uh, no, and they could do with someone there just to boost the popularity. Yeah. Someone uh, talk it up and yeah, yeah, that's someone it. actually in in a decent yeah. car that can do decent stuff yeah. and the other thing I think as well is that they go over there and say we're Formula 1 stop everything we're Formula 1 they shouldn't they've got to go over there and fit in yeah yeah. you know you've got to understand that IndyCar and NASCAR are the top things out there Formula 1 is behind them yes accept yeah. that yeah and work on it exactly embrace it the thing again we were talking about earlier one of the reasons that I love IndyCar and, and you're getting into IndyCar is the the relaxed attitude yes uh, yeah. and the sort of the public access to the drivers we, we were watching we were watching a thing on youtube again on the indycar channel uh, drivers from from mixed teams doing little sketches and, and skits together yeah. uh, during the off season just to to keep the interest going and and, and it worked it was great going and you it's know. They're, they're funny little sketches they're they're decent guys they seem to get on with each other i'd love to see formula track. one put hamilton and vettel in a car in london and say go on go on a road trip down to monaco you've got a fiat 500 i would love to see off that. You to see the two of them just talking and there's no pressure on them yeah. there's no competition there at that point it'd be fascinating would be, it would be yeah it would be so good but all you get all see these... them arguing over paying for fuel as well yeah. you get all these sponsors and all, all these hangers on hangers on and all yeah. these reasons why they can't do that they've got to be here they've got to be here they can't be seen with so and so they can't be there. you think it's crazy stick them in a car and let them go yeah you know having said that i think some of the changes that liberty media are doing at the moment are yeah are for the right yes. for the right direction yeah um it, actually saying that the new starting the music that this hollywood guy's come up with it came on the other day and my wife sat there what films on? She yeah. genuinely thought Avengers was coming on. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's the race. I thought it was superheroes, <laughs> and then she said that Alonso came on. It is. Yeah. <laughs> they are. I mean, I, I like what they're doing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is one of the reasons that, again, with, with the Indy Five Hundred, the, the, the driver announcements and the sort of the, the, the pomp and circumstance and all it. It's it's brilliant. Yeah, um, it really is cheesy, but Formula, it's brilliant. Formula One got ripped apart for doing doing the driver intros and that in in texas oh i loved it i thought that was amazing it was brilliant it, again, it was cheesy but i loved it they keep wanting to go on about entertainment we must put on a show yeah. and do it there you go <laughs> that was putting on a show yeah yeah uh, in, how long have we rumbled on uh, yeah hour? we're we're about right i i feel is it about an hour it is hey. i've been keeping an eye on it <laughs> one of these days one of these days we will keep it down to about half hour 40 minutes like we keep saying we're going we'll, we'll just cut it in half yeah. <laughs> <laughs> part one anyway thank you guys for for listening if you're still with us thank you um, wake up if you're not wake up. <laughs> it's bedtime i would i'd just better say this before the podcast ends congratulations we'll power up did a very good job uh, and now that's over i think we can say goodbye and I'm going to burn my laptop while you're saying that on it. We can say goodbye. So uh, but thanks for joining us. We'll be back soon. We'll see you we'll, uh, soon. And we'll, uh, we'll catch you in the next one. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.